Hey guys, welcome to our first class in virtual production. In this class, I'm going to show you guys how to set up uh, end display in Unreal Engine. And I'm going to show you guys how to also set up a multi-user session for virtual production in Unreal Engine. So let's get started. So Epic advises to start from a template. So let's go ahead and uh, create a template. We're not creating one. We're just starting from a template. We're going to start with this virtual production template right here. Also make sure that you turn on your ray tracing because that might be good for us. We don't know. Uh, create the project name to our first class or whatever you're going to call it and uh, press create. Let's go back to the usual layout, the default Unreal layout. Let's go in and create an, a brand new level. We're just gonna start with the basic level so in this level the first thing we're gonna do let's uh, do a couple of things actually let's uh, go into our content draw make sure we dock this layout go into our content and we know that this is uh, the one that this is a default level and we, we have a brand new level right here and the first thing we're going to do is import our mesh because I've got a LED wall at my studio. I'm going to just import that. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and just import all. Just double click to go into this little thing. This is my LED wall at the studio. Okay, let's just go ahead and... Uh, in uh, your build settings go ahead and turn on use full precision uvs apply changes save and close okay that just makes sure that whatever whenever the scene renders on your wall you don't have those little pinches and stuff those little artifacts you won't have those things in case just in case you know Make sure that's turned on this is basically how i made my wall i got took my phone with a poly scanner and just scanned the whole wall took it into maya retopologized the whole mesh and cleaned it all up brought it back into unreal engine and boom here we are now you've caught up so now let's create an end display a brand new one and we're just going to call this uh, because this is a class. Double click that end display. Now we are in our end display. As you can see, they've given you this little tiny little bitty mesh right here, which is this one. Okay, I appreciate that, but I wanted it. Let's go ahead and create a static mesh. On your right hand side, go in and bring in my wall mesh that I just brought that I just imported into the scene. There it is. I know my I know my the way my wall is set up. This X axis right here is where my my wall is facing. This X axis is facing my wall okay let's just go ahead and rotate that 90 degrees that way we on point and my zero zero point is right between the left and the right uh, tip of the bottoms wall so I'm gonna move it forward as you can see it snaps it snaps forward and now we're good that's the left and right the center is right in my middle point okay we're good on that I am going to save this for now, okay? Compile and save. Oh, I guess it's not compiling and saving, so let's go ahead and continue. Now that we've done this, let's go ahead and add our node, okay? Our node, we're just gonna call this the render node. Render node and delete make sure we add the IP address of our render node and right now our render node IP address is 192.168. dot let me see what it is oh 
All right, full screen. Make sure that's checked just in case, you know, just in case there's a little error, margin of error, make sure we're good. Now we have uh, the aspect ratio of my wall. All right, that's all we have to do in here. Now, basically, that's my the flat version of my wall right here. Let's go into VP and uh, on the origin, make sure it's default view. Default view is here. Okay, this is my default viewpoint. So when we go to uh, make sure we have default viewpoint projection policy, we change that to mesh because of course it's a mesh and uh, the mesh type, the mesh name is curved wall. That is that curved wall and right now it's a bit distorted so let's just go ahead and move our let's move our, our default viewpoint down and i am going to turn off my speaker so your default viewpoint is pretty much your ambience your reflections and stuff because everything else will be in your frustum right in the middle frustrum fr i don't even know how to say it but you know what i mean Okay, so let's go ahead and create our ICVFX camera. Okay, so now we are pretty good except for one little part. Now that we are here, <clears throat> click on your ICVFX camera and uh, GPU. You see your GPU index right here. We're going to move that to one okay that way we are delegating our uh, primary card to render on the f on the first graphic card i've got two graphic cards installed in my render engine and right now this is go the the first term is going to render on the primary graphic card which is the first one okay call that number one and we're going to go into this one right here the vp part in, uh, of this situation and uh, our gpu index says minus one which is definitely good except just to make sure we're gonna assign that to zero that way it's on our um, our secondary so primary is one on here and our secondary is on zero which is the outside frustum the outside ambience the other thing I need to mention is once you assign your ICVFX card to your secondary and your um, your outer frustum to your primary or whatever you, whatever you do, however you do it, make sure you activate the fact that this is using two GPUs by going into your cluster right here at the bottom uh, sync policy. You see render sync policy. Make sure you've got NVIDIA usually it's on uh, ethernet by default make sure you put it to nvidia and that will make sure that you use your sync cards your your nv sync that will sync both the first and second card together and that will assign your frustum to your one card and your outer frustum to your secondary card so let's go ahead compile and save then exit this thing now we, uh, we can add our end display into our level and boom, there we are. We're good. We're happy. We are in a great place. Let's go ahead and add a scene. I'm going to go into my Epic Marketplace and just download a scene, you know. So we have done this and I'm going to just go ahead and save. Uh, save, current, save current level. As uh, we're gonna call this the this is our end display level and I'll save it right here now after creating our end display level we saved it right here let's go ahead and create the actual stage okay
This is our stage. In theory, this should be the same size as your actual stage. Now let's go ahead and add the calibration chat, chart, chat, chart. All right. So go into here, engine content. Then you have to go to editor meshes right here. Scroll down to get to get to calibration. Add this guy right here. The other thing that we need to do right now is make sure that this camera is receiving data. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, do a couple of things. I don't know what kind of tracking system you guys have, but I have a, a star tracker. So I'm going to go in and add in my plugin. Moses. Let's just use the VP free. That way we're only getting the tracking data. Restart. I'm going to save this. Now, um, the, the other thing I would advise you guys to do since we are working in the virtual production level, this uh, end display level, but we keep coming into this as a default, go into your, your file project settings, then go into maps and modes, make sure that your starter map is been saved to the end display one that we just created. that make sure that's your starter map and i just put this to same thing that way when you restart you don't have to go back to that same ass bullshit ass level that we we having here and just save all all right now let's go ahead and do a few more little things Combine your end display with this, but technically that's what we're supposed to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure that the tracking data is coming in. Let's go ahead and set up our live link. Source, Moses Hardware, UDP, and I'm going to call this uh, ST for Star Tracker. And I'm going to call this editor. Okay. And my star tracker IP address. 192.168. Okay. I'm going to add my star tracker. But when I go to here, my port number is 8001. I know my port number is not that. It is 8003. Or 4. Now we are green. Let's go ahead and save that as our preset editor, star tracker editor. We're just going to put it right there. Okay. And we're good. So we've created our star tracker little node right here. So let's go ahead and add in our camera. Let's go to our quickly add projects uh, menu right here, the little box with a plus, go to cinematics and go to cine camera actor. That way we can add our new act camera actor. Boom, it is gonna spawn right here somewhere random. Okay, that's fine. Select your end display. You will notice that there is no camera here. What we want to do is attach our cine camera actor to the, to the end display. That way, when we move the end display, we can move the cine camera actor. Except not this little thingy right here, not this old camera. I want the new one, okay? Select your end display. Then your ICVFX camera, reassign your camera actor to the new camera, okay? So now the new, we are... Uh, operating at the perspective of the new camera as you can see now if you go down to your end display this one end display and select your icvfx camera you can see we've assigned that as a new camera now go to your camera you will notice that you do not have tracking data coming in so let's go add our tracking data 
just type in Moses or whatever, however you add your tracking data. We can see that the component controller right here, the live link con component controller is not assigned to anything. So let's just go ahead and assign to our little lively controller, which is uh, this one that we just created. Of course, it's pointing the wrong direction. I'm going to go ahead and move it. All right, now my camera is pointing to our zero, zero point. Okay. It's pointing to our zero, zero point. So now the camera is exactly, most this is really, 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 really accurate. Okay, my star tracker is really, really accurate. So just in case we want to do offsets here and there, let's go ahead and add our little basic actor right here. And of course, we're gonna zero, zero, zero point this bad boy. And we're gonna add that actor as our parent and the camera will be the child. Okay, now let's select our actor, move it down to our end display class. That way we can also, we can select the end display and move everything together. All right. Cool. So this is pretty good. We are in a great place, but remember we have the, 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 the stage, the end display, and the camera those are two three in the, um, important elements of this situation so now let's create let's select the stage which has the camera as a child actor now let's just go ahead and uh, group these okay command g or well sorry control g or you can just press this right here that way everything is grouped and you'll be able to move that Okay, control G to group those things. But again, always have your little calibrator right here, which is very important. And we'll get to that a little later down the line. But it's always good to have the calibrator that way when you film your, your, your movies or whatever, you have this color reference right here to match in um in resolve or whatever color grading uh, software that you guys use okay go ahead and save that okay we're good on this i triple double save this shit now the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna add these this end display configuration into a new level in your windows open your levels we're gonna just dock this here go to our outliner and delete some shit this shit right here delete then we're going to delete our directional light. We're going to delete our exponential fog. We're going to delete our floor. That way we only have the end display class. We're going to delete our atmosphere, our light, our sky sphere. Our delete everything except for of course we have this group which is the end display and the plane and of course your calibrator and just save it so a little bit of ha some house cleaning right here we are going to create a folder and we're gonna call this meshes mesh or whatever add in your material move here and add in your mesh right here move here and uh, we have a, a tracker
and the only thing we have is our end display our level and the other level and we're gonna call this a map That's it. End display class and uh, end display level can stay in here, or the end display level can move in here. I don't give, I don't care. Okay, now these can stay out here. That is done. So now let's go ahead and create a brand new map, a brand new level. So we're gonna create this level, and we just gotta call it basic level again. All right, now here is where things get interesting. Go to your levels and add existing level and add your end display level. The other thing you need to do is select your end display, go into streaming, change streaming method, and set this to always loaded. Okay, compile. Um, save this and uh, we're gonna call this brand new level that we just created we're gonna call this uh uh i don't know some shit like sky level or some shit the sky level and save save all yes sky I don't know. In your levels, if you turn this off, see what happens? You're turning the whole thing off, which means you can transfer this level to different projects. And that's the point. So, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to use this end display configuration into a virtual production scene. I'm also going to show you guys how to create a multi user session. That way, you can use two computers the render node and the editor node. And there's more fun things to come, so I'll see you in the next lesson.